Welcome to Chris's Storytelling Corner. This is Christopher Moldong. We're going to look into Yuki Holder Volumes 7 to 9. Next week, I'll do mo reviews for a new manga series. And that series will be Death Note, starting with volumes 1 to 3. Uh, I'll do a shorter recap for it as well, as I'm going to assume that a good amount of people, of viewership, has already read the manga. So I just like to give my thoughts on each manga and whatnot, and just uh, recap the bit, like a lot more of the bigger events that happens in Death Note and whatnot. Um, so as far as Yuki Holder goes, I'll still do a manga review for each Yuki Holder volume that comes out. So when volume 10 comes out, I'll do a, a manga review for volume 10, and so on and so on. So also check out my reading of The Frog of the Crown, pages 4 to 7, and my list for the anime characters with the worst luck. Uh, next week's list will be about iconic items in movies. Uh, you can check out my author's website at www.chrismoldon.com. You can buy my first novel, a fantasy adventure called The Mustard Prince in the Convent Kingdom for $4.99. Also for $2.99, you can buy my short story collection, a collection of 10 short stories in the horror, fantasy, and realistic fiction genres. Check out my Twitter page and author's Facebook page. Links to all these will be provided on the description. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and comment to this channel if you're on YouTube. Or follow, share, and comment on this channel if you're listening to this on SoundCloud. And if you're listening to this on iTunes or Stitcher, please rate, review, and share this channel. So, the way these ones will work though is that I'll give a pretty detailed recap of what happens in each volume, 7, 8, 9, and give my thoughts on said volume. So, uh, let's start with volume 7. The volume begins with Mana Tatsumiya introducing herself to Tota and challenging him to a fight. Uh, Karamaru and Iku wants to fight. So they fight and Mana defeats Tota rather easily. She still compliments his fighting prowess. Uh, she tells Tota how strong his grandfather was and tells him about thunder in heaven, great vigor. Mana tells the three to come with her and they go to the headmaster's office. Two girls greet her and one calls her Headmaster Tatsumiya. Mana explains that she's acting headmaster and that an old friend asked her to stand in for a while. Uh, she tells Tota the Mahora Martial Arts Tournament and that they hold the finals at the top of the tower. The tournament will happen in summer of next year. It will include all battle techniques and styles. They plan for multiple categories of battle format like one-on-one, -on -one, two two-on-two, and team battles. She shows them video of previous tournaments. And two fighters who appear to be Kufe and Yue Ayase win the whole thing. She also reveals that they received an application with the name Negi Springfield. Elsewhere, in front of a coffee shop, Tota talks with the rest of the group about his grandfather's application. And then we go back with Mana in a flashback. Tota agrees to participate in the tournament. So back at the coffee shop, Tota tells them, uh, that Mana let him borrow the actual application that his grandfather submitted and signed. Yukihime, as Evangeline, dressed in her old school clothes, appears and tells Tota that he can participate. Evangeline tells Tota that she's interested in Negi's application with his signature. Fate Avaruncus then appears and asks to see the application. So Evangeline tells Tota to give her the application and she and Fate look at it. They recognize it as Negi's handwriting. They suddenly appear on a barren surface with Negi and Nagi on it. Karamaru thinks it's a spell that activates when specific people touch the signature. Fate asks about the Mage of the Beginning's resonance. Negi tells him that it's not what he thinks. Negi and Nagi get covered in black magic. Then the mage of the beginning appears from the ground and rises while entrapping Negi and Nagi. She then says, you are Tota Kanoe. 
They vanish, and they end up back at the front of the coffee shop. Evangeline then orders Tota to withdraw his application. She says that they will fight in the tournament, meaning like Evangeline and Fate, and that he should never speak of it again. She tells everyone not to help Tota. She then tells him that she doesn't need him and forbids Tota from leaving the headquarters due, during the year before the tournament. Evangeline and Fate then walk away. So, back at headquarters, Tota is seen lying on the couch. He recalls uh, having to withdraw his application with Mana. Karen comes by and tells Tota to leave the guest terrace. Santa comes by and Karen asks how he's doing. He tells her that he's good, but kind of uncomfortable too. Everyone actually treats him uh, really nicely. Which is a big departure from him getting bullied in the past. Uh, Iku and Kyrie come by. Iku tells Tota that the person next to his grandfather was his great-grandfather and tells of his exploits. He then reveals that the rogue person was the life maker, the mage of the beginning. He also says that the great-grandfather was the man that Yukihime truly loved. Kirei suggests that Tota loves Yukihime. Then Tota gets up and tells everyone that he's running away from home. Iku hands Tota keys to an amphibious buggy. He rides off and ends up at the slums. He then goes to the big city and goes to an isolated area and starts training with the gravity blade. The gravity blade starts to speak with him and Tota calls the sword Side Stick. Side Stick reveals that he was created by a certain wizard and that he is to help anyone connected to 3A. He also tells Tota that he has not accepted him as his master. So as Tota talks to Side Stick, a man with an afro gets near him and is fighting a group of four guys. The man with an afro gets up uh, gets beat up, but Tota de defeats the four uh, easily. A holographic girl appears and tells Tota that he's a winner, and that he defeated three rank D and one rank C, and won 5,800 points. He still has an account in the tournament despite withdrawing his application. So the man with the afro challenges Tota, but Tota defeats him easily and gets 50 points. Uh, then he tells Tota that the prelim round of the tournament is a street fight. Win enough times and he earned the right to enter the tournament for free. It starts at rank E, or the highest rank is rank E, or, excuse me, the lowest rank is rank E, then D, then goes up to D, then C, B, A, and the highest rank is rank S. There are only 18 free spots um, to get into the tournament this way. Uh, he then tells Tota to come with him. In a monologue, he says that he can use him. They go to an underground arena where fighters are rank B or above. Only one person has made rank S. People from Inverse Mars are there as well. Uh, so he introduces himself to Tota as Afro the Forever. He's a magic app developer and asks Tota to, jo to join up with him. Uh, Tota has shown some of the fighters. Uh, there's Gloria Chief, Makbe Sustain, the Karen and Sakre duo, Morbar Gran, who was actually from Nagima. He was, uh, I, like, he was, uh, not a, I think they were like a group of bounty hunters or something like that, that were actually hunting and actually, like, was, they weren't hunting, uh, Nadoka's group, they kind of used Nadoka's group as a diversion to get other bounty hunters or something like that, I forgot. Uh, Ogresan and Meredith. Then Tota senses someone in a hood behind him, and then he's shown getting attacked, but he seemed to have just imagined it. Afro takes Tota to his junk shop, a guy in a wheelchair calls Afro Laszlo, and welcomes him home. The guy in the wheelchair introduces himself as Ray Chikage. He runs a shop with Laszlo and is a magic app developer. Uh, Laszlo challenges Tota to a fight, but this time he uses different magic apps, and Tota has a harder time against uh, Laszlo. They try to install Tota with magic apps using monophones and monogloves, but the gloves explode when he touches it. After more attempts, Ray concludes that Tota just cannot use apps and questions what he is. Tota then talks to Sidestick. Sidestick tells him that there's an even deeper secret uh, to him and his bro uh, bloodline. Before Sidestick tells him the secret, the hooded person appears behind Tota and tells him that he's a badly done low-level copy. 
the hooded person gets into this face and calls him Nissan. Uh, then says, I've come to kill you. They fight, and the hooded person gets the better of Tota. Then he uses, uh, Tota uses Magia Arabia, but Tota still gets defeated. And then the hooded person shows Tota uh, the sword Ensis Exorcisons, the sword that dispels demons and magic. It's a replica of the sword wielded by grandfather's partner. That would be Asuna Kagurazaka. The hooded person then tells Tota that he's just grandfather's copy and that grandfather could not have children. Tota takes off the hood and re reveals that the person is a girl. She then uses a spell to try to kill Tota and then Santa appears behind her and attacks. Karamaru Maru and Kirie appear with Santa. Uh, the girl goes after Kirie, but she dodges all of her attacks. Then K uh, Kuramaru and Santa attack the girl, but their attacks don't even scratch her. The girl then retreats. Tota has a dream of Yukihime and his friends back home leaving him. The girl um, then appears and tells him that he's a monster who can't die. Then Tota wakes up from bed, and Karamaru, Santa, Kirie, Rei, and Afro are there with him. Rei guesses that Tota is an immortal, and that so are the rest of his friends. Afro goes into town to get medicine. Sidesick reconfirms that he also believes that Tota is a clone and doesn't have a grandmother. Karamaru takes care of Tota, who is sick and bad. He reveals to Totomaru that he thinks he's in love with Yukihime. Karamaru says that he can, he can talk to him uh, anytime. Karamaru finds strange traces of magic by Tota's shoulder. A holographic image of the hooded girl appears, and that girl challenges Tota to a rematch at the Mahora Martial Arts Arena. One year from now, she reveals that she's holding the whole town hostage. Karamaru assumes that this mess is, is happening in real time, and, she, and the girl tells them to look outside. An explosion happens in town while Afro is still in there, like at town. Kirie and Santa appear with Afro. Kirie tells him that, uh, tells Tota that all the innocent people are fine too. We're shown Kirie, Santa, and Afro helping everyone evacuate, and Kirie says that she calculated everything perfectly. She also reveals that it took her six tries to get this right. Karamara reveals to everyone that he traced the girl's call and it came from space at the top of the tower. At the end of the volume, Tota says that he accepts her challenge, he will win his way up the tower and take her down. So, some thoughts on volume 7. Um, I mean, one of the biggest mysteries here is this mysterious girl that calls Tota Nissan, you know, which is brother. She knows that Tota is a clone. We also know she's really powerful and just doesn't seem to like Tota or humanity in general. I mean, she is willing to just kill at will. Who is she, though? What is her goal? You know, we can, we know she wants to kill Tota. Uh, we don't really know why. We don't even really know why she hates Tota so much. It's also very curious as to why she has Asuna's sword. So... You know, this person seems to be very powerful. Another person that is saying or telling Tota to meet, uh, telling Tota to meet at the top of the tower. Fate, if I'm not mistaken, said the same thing. So that's very interesting. Um, you know, Tota seems to have to go through these preliminary fights. It should be something that Tota goes through relatively easily. You know, I, I mean, I can't imagine him, like, not being able to get into this tournament. Um, and, you know, it's kind of cool that they had the martial arts tournament, the Mahora martial arts tournament. It's the Mahora Budokai. It's one of the best, like, story... Well, I don't know about the best, but it was a really cool story arc back in Nagima. They had, like, Evangeline, um, Takahata Sensei, Setsuna, Kayede, um, Kunel Sanders, Negi, Asuna, um, Kufe, Mana. Uh, that was a really good tournament. And uh, I hope this one also lives up to the uh, 
original, I guess. Uh, I have to say right now, though, I don't like the whole magic app thing. I don't. I, I kind of wish they didn't invent this whole magic app thing. Uh, it's just so unauthentic, you know. Like you see, like Nagima and whatnot. Like it takes a long time for them to learn new abilities and whatnot. There's kind of this sense here that like strength and power can just be bought instead of being trained for. You know, it, it's just, it's kind of weak. Oh, I have a lot of money, therefore I can use a magic app. You know, it's like it's, it's just kind of weak, you know, to me. Uh, very interesting that Mana Tatsumi is now the acting headmaster. She can still fight very well. She seems to have some sort of stake in the tournament. You gotta kind of wonder what it is. She seemed uh, to have really wanted Tota to enter the tournament, and. Um, you know, I, I'm kind of wondering if there's more to, to everything with Mana than meets the eye, in a sense. Uh, we saw Negi, Nagi, and the Mage of the Beginning pretty much together. You know, it's uh, sadly ironic that that situation happened because, and, and it's very odd because we don't really know how this. So, at the end of Nagima, we found out that Nagi was the, like, the new mage at the beginning, right? So, and at the end of Nagima, Negi supposedly defeated the mage at the beginning and freed his father. So, I mean, that, I don't know if... There's something else going on here. If they're not really following that storyline. I think that was a possible ending. Or something like that. But um, I gotta wonder what that is all about. The Mage of the Beginning. The Life Maker is back. Um, you know. In Nagima. It was Negi and Asuna. That defeated the Mage of the Beginning. And uh, it seems like Tota will be very important in dealing with Major Beginning. Interesting seeing Negi and Nagi there. Um, as, uh, you know, Yukihime had a thing for Nagi. Um, very interesting, though, with Yukihime, you know, she told Tota that she doesn't need him. That was a very huge blow to Tota. Um... Technically, she doesn't really need him. <laughs> um, but, you know, to a, a guy like that, that, you know, Yukihime has been something of a mother figure to him, uh, if not more, a, as it's being hinted that Tota is in love with Yukihime. We'll see how that goes. Count to volume 8. The volume begins with Tota wearing an eye patch, Karamaru and Afro fighting. Uh, uh, a random group of people for the preliminary battles of the upcoming tournament. These battles are televised. Toto then fights in the underground arena and he blows through his opposition and starts to make a name for himself. Then he fights against Karen Da and Toto loses. Toto then fights against Morbor Morborgron and loses. Morborgron says that he needs a finishing move and says that he's similar to his grandfather. Gloria Chief then defeats Tota. Then, uh, after the tournament, uh, Tota and his friends, I think they're in front of a cafe or like a coffee shop, uh, they talk about him having a finishing move. They then talked with uh, Morborgron, and he mentions that Tota's grandfather had thunder in heaven, great vigor, and lightning speed Shundo. Uh, Tota wants to use similar techniques, but K uh, Kuromaru tells him that he can't use magic. Toto walks around and accidentally bumps into Yukihime. Yukihime slaps him and asks what happened to his eye. He reveals to Yukihime that he knows that he's a clone. He wants an explanation, but Yukihime won't give him one. Apparently, Fate Avarunkis is with Yukihime and they're like shopping together. <coughs> Excuse me. A woman named <coughs> Dana Ananga 
Jagannatha appears and calls Yukihime Kitty. She tells Kitty that she'll be taking Toto rope with him. Uh, Kate, uh, Kitty and Dana seem to know each other from two or three hundred years ago. Fate calls Dana the Witch of the Rift, a noble. And nobles have no interest in human affairs. Yukihime reveals that nobles, uh, nobles are the real thing. Pure bl- uh, they're pure-blooded vampires and high daylight walkers. Dana asks Toto why he wants to get stronger, and he says it's all just to beat fate. Uh, Dana says that he won't be able to beat fate, but that's where she comes in. She stabs uh, through Toto's body with just one finger. He then wakes up in a mysterious place. She sees, uh, or he sees a girl running around, and then encounters a giant dog monster. He finds a girl. She looks like a young Yukihime and doesn't seem to speak uh, Toto's language. She seems to speak French. They find Dana sleeping. The girl gets out weapons and tries to kill Dana but fails. Clocks appear and it is suddenly nighttime uh, with the girl gone and Dana behind Tota. Dana says that things are all kinds of warped around there. Uh, apparently Tota's right eye is fine and Dana says that she healed him. Dana reads Toto's mind and reveals that she raised Yukihime and taught her how to fight. Then Toto asks to be Dana's disciple. Dana says that she's uh, that she'll toughen him up. Uh, Dana then tells Toto that he is Yukihime's man of destiny. Uh, Yukihime doesn't know love and Toto is the only one man that can teach her love. Suddenly, Santa, Kirei, Kuromaru, and Afro are there with them, sitting at the table next to them. Toto, Kuromaru, Santa, and uh, Kirei train by having a race. They use some Shindo. Apparently, Rin, or Ren Chikage is there as well. Kirei gets sick of the training and tries to leave but can't. Uh, Dana senses a strange power to Kirei. Then she uh, turns her attention to Kuromaru. Dana cuts Karamaru and Tota in half. She then times the regeneration. Dana says that uh, the regeneration is too slow. And tells the two to cut. Um, she then tells Tota, excuse me, that uh, Yukihime cut her regeneration time down to 10 seconds and half a year. Dana then shows her own regeneration abilities. Uh, Dana uses purification magic on Santa and. He looks to be passing on. He then recovers in four minutes. So, Toto, Karamaru, and Santa do training where Dana kills them multiple times. Toto and the two lie in bed. When Toto awakens, he's alone in bed and sees the girl. He goes after her and asks, she asks in his language where Dana is. Toto calls her Evangeline McDowell and she asks how he knows that name. She says that she's a distant relative, but currently have nothing to do with each other. She then faints. She recovers by sucking Toto's blood and tells him that she's 16 and to call her Kitty. Uh, Kitty walks away and then turns a corner and then vanishes. Uh, then all of a sudden, Kuromaru and Santa get Toto for training, uh, to do some training. So Toto, Santa, Kuromaru, and Kirei uh, get beat up in their training. Dana tells them it's time for personalized training. So Dana says Sa- Santa, Karamaru, and Kirei to their own training grounds. Toto's training involves spinning a hoop counterclockwise and rolling a ball around his arms and behind his neck. He has to do this for seven days with no food, drink, sleep, or rest. She will add the number of hoops every six hours. Also, if either a hoop or ball touches the ground, his heart will stop. So as Toto continues his training, Kitty appears. Uh, she gets a substitute for the hoops and balls so she can interact with Toto. Uh, Kitty asks to look at Toto's arms. She discovers that he can't use magic and that two unique magics are swirling inside of him. One is light-based magic and the other is dark-based magic. Training's purpose may be to split the two magics. Dana gives him, then gives him more hoops. Kitty then appears with Chacha Zero. She tells Toto that she thinks that someone created him. She then tells Toto that she'll help him practice handling chi and magical energy. Um, 
So after that, uh, Dana comes by and brings Santa Kuramaru and Kure back from the train. She tells them that it was only the first stage. Toto is seen with many more hoops and balls. We're shown flashbacks of Kure's, Kuramaru's, and Santa's training. So a few days later, Tota, Santa, and Karamaru train against uh, Dana by fighting against her. Their regener regeneration is faster, actually. Uh, Dana tells Tota to show her the hula hoop and ball training again. Uh, looking down at the ground, there's a large yin yang symbol below Tota. Dana reveals that the black magic or black of Venus is Magia Arabia and that is keeping him immortal. The white magic, or white of Mars, is magic cancel, and it is the one thing in the world that can destroy the mage at the beginning. It actually goes back to Asuna, who had magic cancel as well. As Tota keeps training, Dana is asleep, a giant dragonfly appears, and Dana grabs it and teleports it away, saying that it wandered in. She says, she tells Tota that this place is a rift between dimensions. Then adds more hoops and balls, and Tota is able to walk around and do his training at the same time. He finds Kitty sleeping while she cries for her mother. Tota looks into her memories where she was turned into a vampire by the mage of the beginning and wandering aimlessly. Tota concludes that she's Yukihime's past self. Kitty then attacks Tota for looking into her memories. Tota grabs Kitty's arms and, deca and declares that he's in love with her and that he wants to repay her. Dana appears and tells Tota not to get too attached. She then tries to send Kitty home, but Tota blocks Dana and manages to land a strike on her and blow her out of the rift. Kitty says that the only thing in her future is a vast empty wasteland. But Tota tells her otherwise and that he'll make it true. Uh, the not being a vast empty wasteland is what he'll make true. Dana returns bigger and angrier. She hands him a diploma of graduation for the beginner's course. Uh, we're shown Tota against the giant monster dog. He tries a new move but fails. Um, Tota then walks around and sees Kitty. She tells him that she learned doll mastery and shows him a doll she made and asks him to fight the doll. He defeats the doll and she presents the doll's sisters who he fights against. Tota then tries to attack, uh, attack Kitty but she uses a throw on him. They then have a tea party. A little later Tota has to leave but Kitty says not to keep her waiting. And the next day Tota, um, Tota finds Kitty and they have a feast. She has to make a request before she has to say goodbye. She reveals that they live in different times. They, they only meet before Dana wakes up. She tells Tota that it's been eight years for her. The favor that Kitty asks is for Tota to stroke her head. So at the end of the volume, Tota is shown uh, patting or stroking uh, Kitty's head. So some thoughts on volume eight. So we get introduced to Dana. Um... Interesting character, you know, important to the story. Uh, she's the one that taught like Evangeline how to fight. Um, as a character, I don't know if I, I, I particularly like or dislike her. I, I'm just a bit indifferent. Like she is, you know, the new master slash coach right now, or uh, slash teacher. Um, but as far as like personality goes, I, I you know, I. I am personally just a bit indifferent to her, you know. Um, she's obviously super powerful. More powerful than Evangeline. Probably a lot more powerful than Fate combined. Maybe stronger than them combined. Um, so she has a lot to teach at least. Uh, we see Kitty, you know. They don't really refer to her as Evangeline or Yukihime. Um, it's interesting to see, like, young Evangeline again, and it kind of goes, kind of ties in with Nagima, because there was a uh, part of Nagima where Evangeline was telling 
about her past. And actually, some of the scenes that you're seeing here are um, like brief scenes that you saw in Nagima. So it's kind of nice seeing that like continuity in that sense. Um, she definitely seems nicer right now, you know, a little more, I guess you can call innocent at this point. And, and Tilda and Kitty pretty much have a relationship thing. I mean, not like it's, well, Tilda loves Kitty, obviously, but like she seems to definitely enjoy his company. She might even like him too. So, uh, kind of see where that's going to go because it seems like Tota totally is in love with Kitty slash and, and Kitty's going to turn out to be Yukihime so that should be interesting too keep talking about a new finishing move with Tota you know Negi had uh, Thunder and Heaven Great Vigor Thunder and Heaven Great Vigor 2 um, Lightning Shindo and like some super spells as well um I don't know what Tota's going to have, per se. If he's going to have lightning-based attacks and, and whatnot. He, right now, he just kind of uses side stick. Seems to... Um, he actually hit Dana with a really powerful attack, so that was really interesting as well. So, you know, he definitely has some, like, special power going on. Um... I mean, this volume, though, a lot of it was just train, uh, training, you know. I don't really know what to think about the hula hoop thing. It seems a bit silly as far as, like, visually. It's like, dude, you got a, like, you got a hula hoop, you know. I mean, it's just like, that's not cool, <laughs> you know. Like, I don't know what to say, but, um, how else to say it. But it seems like it's going to help him out. And everyone, you know, this is like the big training thing. So, you know, with, with all most anime, manga, and whatnot that um, involves this like big training, you know, they'll come out stronger and, and go through a lot of obstacles in order to get stronger. So, volume 9. The volume begins with Kitty saying goodbye to Tota. Tomorrow to him will be 40 years to her. Tota goes out to find her on a message sketch on the table. It says... 287 years from now that's four mornings away uh, for you come see me then Tota, Karamaru, Santa and Kire have a meeting with Dana Dana tells Tota of a finishing move uh, Dana makes a tome for each of them like these books but tells them that it's first come first serve Tota's is for a finishing move Karamaru has a book of secrets Kire uh, Kiri has a book of embarrassing secrets, and Santa has a message from Sayoko. Uh, she puts the tomes in a box and throws the box onto the area beneath them, which is a vast castle ruins crawling with vicious monsters. Dana then throws the four of them onto the area beneath them. So Tota is apparently 500 kilometers away from the castle. Dana tells him telepathically that he's given a time limit of one month. She reveals that the quickest this can be done is four days, which is when Kitty will return. Kyrie appears and says that she'll help. And then in an internal monologue, she says that she's going to take her book at the last second and burn it. She's surprised that Tota wants to do this in four days. Kyrie then shows him that she was training at a library near there. She then makes a save point at that library. The two go through different obstacles, but eventually make it to the castle, and it took them three days. They see a flash coming from the castle, and something is shot at them, and Kyrie dies. They end up back at the save point. Then they make it to the castle the next this time around, half a day faster than last time. They see something humanoid uh, on one of the towers, and then it disappears. Karamaru appears and saves them from attack from that humanoid looking thing. Karamaru tells them that it's a guardian of the tower and it's a high level thunder spirit. It kills Kyrie and the three end up back at the save point. Kyrie tells them that it's Ruin Ishkur and that monster is as, par as, as powerful as Tota's grandfather. 
They go back to the castle and Tota and Karamaru fight uh, Ruin Ishker. Uh, Ruin Ishker gets the better of them easily as he beats on Tota. Tota has a dream where he's sitting under a tree with Kitty. Kitty helps Tota figure out the Magia Arabia technique, Sinus Magnus. And its power is in uh, Tota's left arm. Back in the fight, Tota asks for the hula hoop from Komaru and gets it. After Ruin Ishgur uses an attack on Tota, Tota uses Thunder and Heaven, Great Vigor. Tota then defeats Ruin Ishgur. Kiri 8 flies to them. Tota tells them that his use of the hula hoops is called Revolution and he needs it to handle Magia Arabia. He tells them that he has to wait on his opponent to absorb their attacks, but he can keep spells in reserve. The top half of Ruin Ishgur appears, and he has the box. He throws the box at them, but Santa suddenly jumps in and takes it. After some explanation, Tota lets him have the box. Ruin Ishgur tells them that their trial isn't over yet. There's a teleportation circle at the top of one of the towers, and once they reach it and use it to go back to Dana's castle, then they'll have completed the trial. There are three more opponents, and they are the spirits of earth, water, and fire. Apparently, the thunder one, uh, Ruin Eshker, is the strongest of, the, of these four, pretty much. They eventually make it back to Dana's castle, and Kitty is there waiting for Tota. She runs up to Tota and hugs him. She tries to kiss him, and Tota says that she's not Kitty. She reveals herself to be Dana. Dana says that he made it in time. She tells him that after 287 years, Kitty forgot about him and the promise. Dana presents Tota a window to see Kitty from 450 years ago. Is that right? Yeah. Um... Uh, Tilda looks, and Kitty is alone in a castle with frozen, bo with frozen bodies around. Um, someone tries to kill Kitty for revenge and cuts off her head. As she cuts, it. at the same time, she cuts him in half and freezes him. She reattaches her head, and the person reveals his blade was poisoned, and she will suffer for ten years. Dana reveals that she was called Demon Queen and did a lot of killing. Tilda breaks through the glass and sees her. She recognizes him and tries to run away. The castle crumbles apart and they get separated. Kitty thanks him for coming to see her and that she hasn't been this happy in a hundred years. Tota apparently is in a twist in time where he could conceivably die, but is saved by Dana and taken back to his own time. So Tota is asleep for five days but wakes up. He asks a favor from Karamaru and they constantly train together. Tota makes up his mind to be the strongest. Eight months later on the graduation exam, Tota fights against Dana. The whole like palace is wrecked. They both end up fine since they're both immortal. Dana approves of their participation in the Mahara Martial Arts Tournament. She tells Tota that he still uh, could not defeat fate. They head to a door, and Tota says that he has to stop by HQ to see Yukihime. We're shown Shinobu uh, way back in the second uh, second chapter of the first book at the Shin Tokyo uh, train station. At Earth orbit inside the spaceship White Crow, we're shown Isana Kanoe and Honoka Kanoe. They can't w wait to meet Tota Kanoe. And they look like younger versions of Kanoka and Setsuna. So, an old woman with Ayaka uh, Yukihiro's uh, patio card, along with someone else that looks like Chachamaru, and a young girl appear in front of the inn. The young girl wants to see Tota Kanoe, wants to see if he'll be worthy of being her husband. Tota heads to uh, HQ Senkyokyan uh, Khan and it, on his buggy and immediately goes to Yukihime's office. Tota declares that he loves her as uh, Iku, Santa, Kiramaru, and Kirima, uh, Kirie eavesdrop. Apparently, the whole place can hear his declaration. Tota then asks to marry her and Yukihime attacks him. Tota tells Yukihime that if there's not someone keeping an eye on her, then someday she might vanish on them. She finds it very childish. 
Yukihime then tells Toto along with Santa, Kirie, and Kuramaru that they have a very important guest visiting the inn. The four are demoted and have to work as inn staff. Uh, they all try to console Tota in a flashback. Tota asks for an answer and Yukihime flat out says no. However, she says that she won't disappear on him. Karen appears and attacks Tota. At the end of the volume, Yukihime is by herself and she says that he's 500 years too late. So, thoughts on volume 9. Um, got a lot, saw a lot more with Kitty and, uh, the part where she has to kill and whatnot. Definitely a pretty sad, um, it's kind of sad how her past is like. It's kind of neat that we finally got to see this part of, like, e the Evangeline character or the Yukihime character. You know, it's hinted at in Nagima, uh, but it's kind of cool seeing it here. Uh, Tota and Kitty's whole like relationship it's pretty cute actually I, I thought you know uh, you know he totally loves her she seems to like him he's willing to just cause uh, it's kind of like cause a butterfly effect <laughs> in order just to see her and whatnot um, at least we know that her her like future in Nagima and, and now in Yuki Order, it turns out to be pretty good. You know, she she gets to be with Class 3A, um, make, seemingly make friends, you know. So then she grows up even more to be Yukihime, in charge of Yuki Order. So at least we know that, um, that she's going to turn out fine. Uh, this volume, they finished their training with Dana. Um, we can tell that Tota has gotten really strong. Um, the fight with Dana and Tota kind of... It, it kind of... Exemplifies the whole thing about... Almost how like ridiculous it is that they're immortal. You know, because she's just like... Yeah... You know, between battles with immortals, you're just going to have these long, drawn-out battles that lead to nothing, <laughs> more or less. Because, you know, they're both immortal. They're just going to regenerate anyways. Um, so, uh, but yeah, you know, they finish their training with her. Hopefully, they get stronger. I don't know if we'll see the Dana character moving forward. Is I don't really know what use she's going to have. And I can't really see her like interfering or helping out. So I think this might be the end of... Uh, wouldn't be surprised if this is the end of Dana. Maybe we'll see her as, as like an audience member or something like that. Like watching a tournament or something. But I can't imagine she's going to be like... At this point, like some like major character or anything like that. It's interesting that Magia Rebia is uh, alive and kicking with uh, with Tota. Um, I mean, he's used it before, but now he, he can use it in a more controlled manner. And even use Thunder and Heaven great vigor. So, obviously Tota doesn't have a totally new attack. He just pretty much has Negi's attack. So... Um, and it has to be said, I, I can't help but feel that, like, Tota seemed to have an easier path to learning these techniques. Whereas, like, Negi, I mean, he was in a scroll. He's trying to control Magia, Rebia, and whatnot. And he's about to die. You know, and actually, technically, he does die. But Magia, Rebia saved him and whatnot. Um, Tota seems to learn everything a bit easier, though. Um, so, I don't really know what to feel about that. I mean, he has a lot of catching up to do because, you know, the people he's going up against are guys like Fate Avarunkis, uh, you know, that knew his, the person that might be his sister, I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, I, I guess they kind of had to speed up Tota becoming really strong. 
very interesting also finally we got to see some new characters uh, you know the two Kanoe girls Shinobu's there someone an old woman that I'm gonna assume is Ayaka it's kind of nice seeing old Nagima characters there along with what looks like Chachamaru and what looks like Ayaka's like granddaughter or something like that so very interesting to see what happens next volume what you know these new guests are even doing there um, and like I said it, it's nice to have something of like a Nagima reunion in a sense so that's all for today. If you like this, don't forget to subscribe, share, and comment to this channel if you're on YouTube, or follow, share, and comment on this channel if you're listening to this on SoundCloud. If you're listening to this on iTunes or Stitcher, please rate, review, and share this channel. Thank you for listening to these manga reviews. Next week, I'll review Death Note Volumes 1-3, to and make a list, or have a list out for the most or some particularly iconic items in movies. So, thank you, and until next time.